Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the Premiere Plus software to split large embroidery designs into smaller hoops. The example I'm using today is the Grand Dream Hoop by Faf. Our first step is going to be going to the wizard screen and express designs. Our second option, as you can see, is to create a design of a certain size. Each of these squares is 10 millimeters, so if you know the exact size of the design that you want, you can count those out and map it out that way. But I don't really want to do this. I want to create a design that fills the entire hoop and getting as much as I can, so I'm going to go design in hoop instead. From there, I will upload the design that I want. These first couple screens are just resizing and double checking your pattern. But once you get to this screen is where we start to edit our design. The first step is to reduce colors. So since this is just going to be a one color design, I want to enter in two to remove all the extras and then remove all of the background colors. Then we'll hit next. I want this design to be all satin stitches instead of fill. So I correct that and update it. Then just click check over to your design. Make sure it's exactly what you want and then go ahead and click finish. Now the first time I did this, here's where I went wrong. I thought this just plugged into my machine and I was good to go, but I am not. This is a reversible hoop, meaning it embroiders one area and then the other. It has this 30 millimeter overlap area. So the first set side you do is the left and you plug it in and it'll embroider this whole left area. Then you flip it around and it will embroider the entire right area. This 30 millimeter overlap area is for intelligent design, which I will show you later. Now I'll delete the design just so you can see it better, but here's our right area where we plug it in, our left area where it gets plugged in, and then our 30 millimeter overlap. And we're back. If your design has less stitches to match up going vertical than it does horizontal, you might wanna rotate your design 90 degrees. So we can see this horizontal line here and our vertical line. If there's fewer stitches to line up horizontally, you want to go to that home screen and rotate your design 90 degrees like this. That said, this design is a whole lot of stitches no matter which way you turn it. So I'm going to leave it the natural way. To slice this design, we're going back to wizards and then slice. Select the smaller hoop, the 360 by 200 mil. Otherwise, it's not going to be right. If we're going to use our intelligent slice, we want to make sure that we have that 30 millimeter overlap area. To demonstrate what I mean by the intelligent slice, we're going to go to this next screen. And as you can see in the left side, it overlaps a little bit and kind of carries stitches over. And on the second one, we're missing part of that nose piece and the stitches down there. So that is the intelligent slice to kind of save some stitches. For this particular design, I want it to go straight down the middle. So we can see that it's cut everything right down the middle. There's no overlap, nothing. Next step is to save your design and export it. So don't click the next, but save it. Put it as a single name and it's actually going to save as two files that you can transfer over to your machine. Now that it's saved, you can click next out of here. This step is optional, printing off the blueprints for it basically to outline, but I just use the precise positioning on my machine to line everything up when it's done. Now we're at our sewing machine and we're going to make sure that we have our Grand Dream hoop selected, first of all. Now opening up our design, it's saved as two separate files, even though we only named one. And it saved it as Anubis pillow and then the underscore zero one. So this is going to be the left side. It always embroiders that left side first. And that'll be titled number one. To demonstrate how I first learned how to do this, I uploaded the whole design without splitting it and got this message that says you can't have color blocks on both sides, meaning you can't have a full design that covers the whole thing and splits this center overlap area. 
So since this is the left side of the embroidery design, we're going to move it over to the left side. I like to squeeze it right up tight because we did try and fill it and uh, I moved it over too far. We got to get it right on that center line. Otherwise, it's going to be too big to fit in our hoop. So when you do these in hoop designs, it gets a little touchy. Once it's set, it's going to ask if you want to embroider everything on the one side before flipping. I do yes because it's only one color. If you have multiple colors, you might want to not do that. Through some witchcraft, it automatically knows to flip your left side. That way you don't have to do that manually. So it flips it, puts it on the right side, upside down, so it'll all work out in the end. But from there, you can go ahead and embroider everything. When the embroidery is all finished, go ahead and delete the design and then upload side number two. So it'll show up with a name and then underscore zero two. That will appear again and you'll have to move it over to your right side. Again we'll have that flipping message come up and you'll have to make the decision if you want to embroider all of it. At this point you'll want to use your precise positioning to line up all of those little stitches that go down the center line. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button and thanks for watching.